Belgrade is the capital and biggest city in Serbia. It is at the point where the Sav and Danube rivers meet. It's also where the Pannonian Plain and the Balkan Peninsula connect. It's a metropolitan area with a population of 2.24 million, making it one of the largest in the Balkans. I visited there not long ago, and what I saw was a place with a rich history and culture and many things to see and do. In my opinion, the best way to explore Belgrade is by foot or bike, so bring your sneakers and enjoy, unless you took a time machine back to 1999, when Belgrade was being bombed, or to the early 2000s when organized crime was rampant in the Serbian capital. Because the Serbian capital was not always the relaxed, tourist-friendly city that is nowadays. Today we discover more about this so many times destroyed and so many times rebuilt city, and how it overcame its problems and turned it into a nice place to visit. Let's first talk about organized crime. The Zemun clan was founded in one of Belgrade's neighboring cities, Zemun, in the early 2000s, just after the war. In 2003, when it was at its strongest, it was the most powerful criminal group in Southeast Europe. At their peak, they controlled the drug market and stood out by executing people cruelly and killing all major players, rivals and people who could become their competitors. When they joined Milorad Ulemek Legia, at the start of the last decade, their power was almost limitless. After the demonstrations of October 2000 in Belgrade, the ruling Democratic Party, led by Djindic, announced a decisive crackdown on organized crime. They hid under the guise of a secret group led by Ljubiza Buhachumet until investigators intercepted their phone conversations in Paris, where they spent the money from the kidnappings and planned to start a new business, cocaine trade from Colombia to Europe. The first shipment of half a ton had already been arranged, but the team was arrested at the airport and then extradited to Serbia. However, soon they were released from jail. Only then it became clear to everyone who Ispasojevic was and the powerful empire he built. Their golden period followed in 2002. They did what they wanted. The number of brutal executions grew. They had the top of the state in their hands due to their merits during the October 50 events and partnership with the Legion. Everything changed after the law on collaboration witnesses was passed. Ljubisa Buha, their former friend, turned mortal enemy and was chosen as the witness. Everything was clear with uh, his testimony as a direct participant in most of the crimes of Spasojevic group. The largest clan in the country would fall. Something big was about to happen, something that would fundamentally change the balance of power on the ground. The leadership of the Zimun crime family chose to kill the prime minister, and what happened afterward, I guess no one, not even they, could have guessed. The Operation Saber. As journalists stated, in Operation Saber, the entire top of the Zemun clan was arrested. Legia fled. Pasojevic and Lukovic were killed during an attempt to apprehend them, and in the state of emergency that was declared in Serbia, more than 10,000 people were arrested. The immediate perpetrator of the assassination and member of the Red Berets, Svedan Jovanovic, confessed to the crime and later retracted his statement during the court process. The arrest of members of the infamous clan continued during the following years. The legion itself surrendered and the top of the organization was beheaded forever. However, people are convinced that the Zimun clan still exists and that they are responsible for most of the bad things that are still happening. It's just that they now do their jobs more from Croatia. Although the three main people are still in prison, 40 important figures from the Zimun clan have been free for years, setting people's imagination free. So is Belgrade safe nowadays? Before we answer this question, I would like to ask a small favor. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the like and subscribe buttons, and then I can make more videos about other European and American cities. In general, Belgrade is quite secure, so visitors, in particular, shouldn't run across any major issues. 
Serbia has a low homicide rate of only 1.02 murders per 100,000 inhabitants per year. To put that into perspective, the USA has a homicide rate of 6.3, while Canada has a rate of 2. Russia has a homicide rate exceeding 7. Curiously, despite having a very low homicide rate, Serbia is one of the most heavily armed countries on the face of the earth, with almost 40 guns per every 100 inhabitants. This is a fact that many people find puzzling, and I would be glad to know your opinions in the comments section. If you are visiting Belgrade, the places you should avoid are the zone of residential blocks called New Belgrade, arguably the place with the most crime occurrences, Palilula, Vojdovac, and of course, underground passages, especially during the night. Despite the quick improvement of the city's safety indicators, crimes are more common even during the day in those places. Still, in Belgrade, one can enjoy a stroll along the Knesh Mihailova, the beautiful pedestrian street in the center of Belgrade, with fewer concerns about pickpockets than you would have in the La Rambla in Barcelona. In the video description, I put some really cool things to do in Belgrade if you're planning to visit the Serbian capital. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe to our channel for the next ones.